What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and welcome to part 5 of the comprehensive reading order of X-Men in Collected Editions. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to our patrons for voting for this reading order. Every month on our Patreon, I put up a reading poll as to what the next reading order should be and our Patreons vote for it. And that is also where you can find the written documentation of all of these reading orders. So if you're interested in joining our Patreon, it's a great way to support the channel. All of that information is in the description down below. And I want to again remind everyone that when I'm doing this reading order, I'm just focusing on the X-Men titles, the ongoing titles. No spin-off titles like Excalibur or New Mutants or Fallen Angels, unless it's part of the collection already, or unless it impacts the overall story. So today we're gonna be talking about the years 2012 to 2017. Let's go ahead and get started with this particular book right here. All right, kicking off the list today is Wolverine and the X-Men Alpha and Omega, written by Brian Wood. There are covers by Mark Brooks, gorgeous covers. And this is not collected in the Omnibus. Uh, it is a standalone, hey, Pat Labor. Uh, it is a standalone uh, miniseries, but it does showcase a lot of the kids that are in the Wolverine and the X-Men, such as Armor, uh, Omnibus. But we're going to go back to that, but I did want to showcase that this is not collected in the Omnibus, but it does take place around uh, the second story arc. So let's go back to the Omnibus. So I hate doing this, but I think it's necessary for this particular time so i am suggesting to read wolverine and the x-men issue 17 all the way to 35 just so you can get to get, know the characters more before the next crossover and honestly the crossover doesn't really impact the book not i mean it's not like characters that stay dead or anything but i feel like it's an important crossover and it's really the only crossover of its time during the time uh that the book was coming out and we'll talk about that here in a second but i strongly do urge you to read this all the way up until issue 35 so you can also find out how the characters are dealing with that death from the previous story arc the avx storyline and again i don't like to do spoilers uh unless it's something that impacts the entire timeline or story so uh Spoilers, just in case, but that was from part four, where I talked about Professor Xavier. He got offed. <laughs> uh, he is no longer with us, and I'm not going to say how and why it happened, but you can find out for yourself. But this is Wolverine and his students dealing with that particular death. Now, everybody is dealing with Professor Xavier's death differently. So, this takes us to all new X-Men. This is volume one. Brian Michael Bendis during this time of the, I guess, all-new Marvel, took over the reins of X-Men. So he left the Avengers, uh, and he started writing X-Men, as well as uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, in which we'll talk about a crossover here. And he, in this, he's joined by Stuart Eminem. And the story is pretty basic. Beast, our timeline Beast, our, our current Beast, is frustrated with the way things are going. He feels like... The X-Men are dark. We need to go back to a lighter time. This is the smartest guy in the X-Men. Uh, decides to go back to the past and pull the original five X-Men. So Jean Grey, Bobby Drake, Warren Worthington III, Scott Summers, and Hank McCoy. To bring them back to the present, to remind the people in the present what innocence was like. I, I, I'm serious. That is the premise of this. There's more to it than that, but that's where you need to go next to see how everybody's dealing with things differently and to see the original five or what the cool kids call it, the O5 being pulled from their timeline to our timeline. Of course, that's going to have problems. Then we have X-Men again. Holy crap. So many X-Men. So this is now a new volume of X-Men renumbering to a number one. And this series really kicked off in high gear. This is Brian Wood. He's joined by Oliver Coipel. And together, they're focusing on the ladies of X-Men. Like It's not like they really formed a team on purpose. It just sort of happens. So that's what this is, at least the first story arc. It's called Prime. I never really hear people talk about this. Uh, but this is where we see Jubilee come back with Shogo. And you can find out who that baby is 
in Jubilee's life and how Wolverine takes it. But now we have another ongoing X-Men title, and it's been renumbered again to a number one. So let's go back to this, all new X-Men. Well, here, again, I hate to make you do this, but there is a crossover that's about to happen. And you know me, I really don't want people to keep going back and forth, back and forth. But uh, this is where I'm telling you to read all the way up to issue 15. So go from issue 11 all the way to 15 and then stop reading this particular book. We will come back to this here in a minute. But not before we talk about this book right here, and that is Uncanny X-Men. So... This is Brian Michael Bendis, now teamed up with Chris Bacalo, taking over Uncanny X-Men. And the book, remember, was renumbered, and then they go back to the uh, the original number, the legacy number. But now the team is made up of Cyclops, who's still separated from Wolverine and all the kids at the Wolverine Jean Grey School for Gifted younger Youngsters. And he's joined by Emma Frost, now donning a new kick-ass costume. Uh, Magic is with him. And she, really, Brian Michael Bendis is the one that puts magic in the spotlight. Like, if not for him, I don't think the popularity of magic would have blown up. Despite of how people feel about this series, despite of how I feel about this series, it, that's just fact. And then we see new characters come in, too. Uh, we have Magneto uh, joining them for a while. Uh, we have a lot of older characters come in, but it's Cyclops recruiting new mutants uh, because of that spark that happened towards the end of AVX, which I don't want to... <laughs> I guess it's not much of a spoiler because people are like, wait a minute, didn't Wanda say no more mutants? Well, towards the end of AVX, I do feel like that needs to be an explanation. Uh, so without going into detail, I will say that with the help of hope and the phoenix force they're sparked a new life in mutant uh in the mutant dome so there are more mutants now uh again they're being born again or some kids are finding out that they're mutants so we're kind of going back to the days of the classic x-men so for this particular book though i'm just going to tell you to read all the way up until issue 11 and then stop at issue 11 because there's about to be a crossover and that is this crossover right here, X-Men Battle of the Atom. Also available in trade paperback. But this is a similar story to Days of Future Past, where you have characters from the future coming back to the past. Uh, there's misunderstandings. And it's it's a crossover between uh, adjectiveless X-Men. It's a crossover with all new X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, and Wolverine and the X-Men. And there's two one-shots here, Battle for the Atom 1 and Battle of the Atom 2. But this is what the artwork looks like. So you'll have some future X-Men fighting past X-Men, even though the original five are still stuck in this timeline. Woo! It's a hoot. Now, when I do these reading orders, I love sticking books in. And this is Avengers The Children's Crusade, which is a sort of a follow-up to the, not just Young Avengers, but House of M. And it kind of explains a little bit of what was going on with Wanda. And it kind of restores your faith in her, her character. So even though it's not necessary reading to enjoy what's going on in X-Men, I feel like, you know, to understand a little bit after what happens in AVX, to come back and read this. And it's got beautiful artwork by Jimmy Chung. Which takes us back to all new X-Men. I hate jumping back and forth and I'm trying to limit the amount of times we do that for the best reading order when you have them in collected edition because they're not all one omnibus. I'm sure in the omnibus they might collect Battle for the Atom. But anyway, so you come back to this, to all new X-Men. Uh, this is volume two and just finished reading issues uh, 18 through 21 and then there's X-Men Gold number one in here as well. And then come back to this, Uncanny Volume 1, to finish out reading uh, the rest of the story. So issue 14, 15, the in Dot in Humans issue, and then issue 16 through 18 that are all collected in this oversized hardcover. And finally, come back to this and wrap up this great series. I'm so happy for the people that... Uh, are going to be able to get this for the first time because it is coming back into print later on this year. So come back and finish out Wolverine and the X-Men and enjoy. Now, one of the things I'm going to suggest doing is in this omnibus right here, this is X-Men Legacy Legion. 
This has nothing to do with my Carrie series. This has really nothing to do with adjectiveless X-Men. It has really very little to do with what's going on with the X-Men. This mainly focuses on the character of Legion. It is written by Cy Spurrier. And it's a phenomenal book that hardly anyone talks about. It's a study on the character and a breakdown of who he is and his, uh, his own powers, you know, because there's so many people living inside of his head, therefore the name Legion, and what makes him stand out and what makes him such an... In I, I've never seen a character study like this where I wasn't the biggest fan of Legion, and I really was not looking forward to this book, but I really enjoyed Cy Spurrier's writing. So I gave it a chance, and, and it's X-Men. Of course I'm going to read it. Ended up falling in love with this series. It was freaking awesome. So this collects all 24 issues, and you can completely read it right here. Anytime you want to. You can read it after all the read-throughs or the beginning. It really stands on its own, but I think this is the time to read it after the whole Battle of, of the Atom crossover event. Now, while Jason Aaron's run is over in Wolverine and the X-Men... We have a new series by him. This is The Amazing X-Men. So this would probably be Volume 2 of The Amazing X-Men because Volume 1 was during the Age of Apocalypse. So this focuses on the quest for Nightcrawler. What? What do you mean? Has he been missing? What happened to him? Well, you can find out what happened to him in the pages of Second Coming. But this is Wolverine missing his friend and saying, Let's go get him, bub. Uh, it's got beautiful artwork here at the beginning by Ed McGinnis. And I know a lot of people have asked, like, it, what are the chances that Marvel collects this in Wolverine and the X-Men if it ever were to be reprinted? And honestly, slim to none because they already have those files for Wolverine and the X-Men. But this is the return of Nightcrawler. It's also a reunion of Spider-Man and his amazing friends, but it's Wolverine and his amazing friends. Love seeing Firestar. But that's what the first story arc is about. It's about a reunion between friends and that is it amazing x-men the quest for nightcrawler now let's journey back to all new x-men because here we have our very first crossover with the guardians of the galaxy now this is during brian michael bendis's run on guardians of the galaxy so it is different than dna's run uh so the character of peter quill they kind of mirror their movie versions of themselves more than they did the Dan Abden and Andy Lanning years of Guardians of the Galaxy. But, you know, there's people that love his run, and I'm just here to showcase the books. But this does collect the very first crossover with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and of course that has something to do with the Shi'ar Empire, it's got something, what, is that Darwin Cook? Uh, it's got something to do with Jean Grey, and you can find out for yourself what exactly is happening through these pages and how these two teams come about together. You also have returning characters from the Battle of the Atom crossover. All right, back to the ladies book, Muertas. So again, continuing Brian Wood's run on this book, but this time it is drawn by Terry Dotson and Rachel Dotson supplying the inks. It is the return of a popular character, one of my favorite villains. One of my favorite Wolverine slash Alpha Flight slash X-Men villains, and that is Lady Deathstrike. Now, she is going up against the ladies. However, there's a difference in her. She looks different. She has a Dia de los Muertos mask, so you can find out why she, exactly she has that, but that's where you want to come next. You want to come over to Muertas. Wolverine and the X-Men, we come back to a new series. I can't believe I didn't have this. This is the Jason Latour series. Mahmoud Asrar does the artwork, but this is a follow-up to Wolverine and the X-Men. This is a brand new volume, and it's dealing less and less with Wolverine in this and more and more with the kids uh, in this particular volume right here. Uh, we also have other kids that have uh, come back to the Jean Grey School for Gifted Youngsters. And so, yeah, there are some Morrison characters that show up in here. Quentin Choir comes back, Phantom X comes back, and then we also see them interact with a lot of the kids from Wolverine and the X-Men by Jason Aaron. Now, sadly, this series didn't last very long, be well, for a specific reason, really. And speaking of series that didn't last very long, this is where we come back to Amazing X-Men. Now, Jason Aaron has left the book, and Catherine Eminen is starting to write it. And she is joined by Paco Medina, who has a very similar style to Ed McGinnis. Um, and this is also a reunion of Spider-Man and his amazing friends. So perhaps the title is starting to make sense to people. 
the amazing X-Men. But this is a team up with the X-Men, some members of Alpha Flight, as they go and take down some Wendigos. Because what is a story of, of Alpha Flight without Wendigos? And here's some of the team members right here. Of course, Kurt playing a big part of that in this particular volume. And we also have Rachel. I love that outfit of Rachel's. I'm so glad that they kept it for a long time. It's good to see Northstar and Aurora come back as well. So I'm going to go ahead and suggest you wrap up Amazing X-Men. This, this is a pretty interesting collection because it's got a story in here by James uh, Tinian. It's got a story in here by Chris Yost. And what well, Chris Yost did some of the stories in the previous volume. But this finishes out the series of The Amazing X-Men. So it didn't last very long, sadly. Um... This is the Once in Future Juggernaut. So this collects issues 13 through 19, as well as the annual number one. So for a while, at least, we got to see Firestar be with the X-Men. And it was really nice. Now, one day, I hope to see her back with the Avengers, along with Justice or Marvel Boy, or wherever they end up calling him whenever they revamp the New Warriors. But yes, it is the return of Kane Marco in this particular story arc that kind of wraps up the stories or the series of the amazing x-men and speaking of wrapping up series let's go back to brian wood's series of x-men with all the ladies again mainly featuring the characters of jubilee storm psylocke we now have shogo and as far as wool <laughs> jubilee being a vampire well that all got fixed so you can find out i think that was in the previous run of this but uh, now the artist on this is Clay Mann, who helped out Mike Carey during his run on X-Men Legacy. But this is what the artwork mainly looks like. However, this series did go on for quite a while. I mean, it, it, la well, it lasted a little bit longer than Amazing X-Men and Wolverine and the X-Men, which we haven't talked about yet, but we'll get there. Leading us to the next volume. So this is volume four of X-Men. Now we have a new writer. This is Mark Guggenheim, and he's joined by Harvey Tolibau on artwork. And this is the return of a lot of our Shi'ar uh, characters. So we have the return of Deathbird. She shows up at uh, Sword's footsteps and is dying. So, of course, Abigail Brand calls the X-Men to come and investigate, and the ladies show up here. And even though by this point, X-Factor was going through its own thing, they pulled M to be here. I really enjoyed this team. And I don't know what happened here, but Mark Guggenheim, you know, hit, he's hit and miss with a lot of people. We, we're not even going to talk about the X-Men gold here. But I quite enjoyed this story, mainly because it's focusing on some of my favorite characters, which all happen to be ladies in the X-Men. And it's also the return of the Shi'ar characters that we hadn't seen for quite a while. But sadly, the series all comes to an end here with The Burning World. And now G. Willow Wilson is writing the story uh, with Roland Boshi wrapping up. So this is about, what is it, like a sinkhole that opens up in a town. And of course, the ladies go and investigate. And it's not all what it seems, of course, because it's the X-Men. Storm has to deal with her claustrophobia, which honestly, writers seem to forget about from time to time. So it's always nice to bring it back. Um, I know that some writers, to excuse that, said, well, she got over it. Well, I don't think that's really the case, especially with Storm. You have to have a, you know, you, your Superman has to have a kryptonite of some uh, way. And I think Storm's was always her claustrophobia. Even though sometimes some writers just put it in all over your face. But it was nice to see that come back. And like I said, this, this brings back some uh, old allies and it also brings back some old villains. Now... This series does end up wrapping up, though, so this is the last volume of Adjectiveless X-Men for a while. But back to this. So, spoilers, just in case. This particular volume of Wolverine and the X-Men takes place during a certain storyline in Logan's life. Alright, you were born, so here we go. The death of Wolverine. Even though the death, the death of Wolverine was an actual event, and this really doesn't show how he dies it just kind of shows all the characters reacting to his death or what the ramifications of his death of course you can't continue a series like this of wolverine and the x-men 
uh, Spider-Man and the X-Men just wasn't the same, so the series was sadly canceled. Even though it was a lot of fun, and I kind of miss a lot of these kids. But they do show up later on in gener what was Generation M. Some of them show up. Some of them show up in the Krakoa or the Dawn of X and then Reign of X. But this is the final arc of Wolverine and the X-Men. But let's go back to all new X-Men. We haven't checked on the original five, the O5 in a while. Well, they're still here. And things are changing for them. Now we're seeing uh, characters switch teams. Some are going over to Cyclops' team. Some are staying here on this team uh, with Kitty Pride. So uh, we have a new art artist here. Um, Mahmoud As Asrar uh, takes over the book. And Stuart Eminem takes a break for a while. Actually, Stuart Eminem is retired now. We see them team up with characters like Miles Morales. We see the team get new costumes, so they're no longer in their black and yellow. They now have their own identity, which kind of means that issue 39 of X-Men really uh, wasn't that big of a deal. Where It was a big deal for the X-Men to get new costumes. But this is continuing Brian Michael Bendis' era on this uh, book. And this is all new X-Men. And of course, at the same time, there's also the Uncanny X-Men, which we'll go back to here in a second. But now we have another crossover with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And this one's a lot bigger than the Guardians of the Galaxy. So this is the Black Vortex crossover. Um, this is where you'll find issues of Guardians of the Galaxy. You'll have Legendary Star-Lord in here, all new X-Men, the Guardians team up, Nova's in here, Cyclops has his own series during this time, Captain Marvel's in here, and there's two one-shots of the Black Vortex Alpha and Omega. So pretty much is a mirror that can forever change you. And speaking of changes, one of the X-Men is going to go through some changes. Um, and I'm sure you'll... <laughs> Alright, spoilers. Uh, Warden Mortington Angel gets fire wings. That's, that's huge, I guess. Uh, but how are they going to be restored by the time they go back in time? I mean, they have to go back in time, right? They're time-displaced X-Men. And can they go back in time? Yeah, the storyline was kind of drug out for a while, but all of this, uh, all the one-shots, all the specials, and all the um, parts of this Black Vortex can be found in this particular OHC. It's also available in trade paperback. Omar, what the heck is Avengers X-Men Axis? I'm going to stop you right there because... In order to enjoy this more, even though it has the title X-Men, I strongly suggest reading Uncanny Avengers. Even though the title has very little to do with what's going on with the X-Men at the time, it does have wonderful artwork, and this is all written by Rick Remender. However, to really enjoy this, I strongly suggest reading this, Uncanny X-Force, but we're not going to go into all that because that's that's a whole other X-Force issue or episode. We're going to be talking about this. So, the events of Uncanny Avengers all lead into this particular crossover. It's alternate realities, heroes or villains, villains or heroes, vice, yeah. You get the gist. We've seen it before. It's got beautiful artwork in here. And then there's another Uncanny Avengers series. Um, I think uh, Rick Remender wrapped it up in six issues, though, or wrapped up his run before he left. But this is what... The Access is about. It's got artwork in there by Adam Kubert, Terry Dotson, Lionel Francis Yu, just to name a few of the artists that worked on this book. But just think of alternate realities where villains are heroes, and there are some ramifications that happen, but mainly it's stuck with the Avengers more than X-Men. But I did not feel like not including this in here. Would have been called out. And to wrap up Brian Michael Bendis' era of X-Men... Here's Uncanny X-Men Volume 2. This is a big book. This collects the remaining issues of Uncanny X-Men. Uh, this collects an issue of the all-new X-Men Annual. And we do get a legacy number in here. So this collects Uncanny X-Men 19 through 35. And then we get the legacy number 600. So X Uncanny goes back to the classic numbers. So this wraps up with... The will of the last will and testament of Professor Xavier. You get to meet Matthew Malloy. Chris Bacalo comes back to the artwork to wrap up this run. But yeah, this is where X-Men ends, where Brian Michael Bendis leaves the X-Men. Uh, the O5, the original five, are still here. And we have new members uh, of the X-Men, like Gold Balls. But this wraps up Brian Michael Bendis' run on the X-Men. Yes, the most powerful, well-hidden secret of Professor Xavier is 
Matthew Malloy. And the least I say about that, the better off we are. You can find out for yourself by picking this up. Now, something huge happens to the entire Marvel Universe, and it all starts here in Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman and Ezad Ribic. So, this is just years of in the making. It's got his... Um, Pretty much wrapping up his stuff in S.H.I.E.L.D., Secret Warriors, Fantastic Four, and Avengers. But also, you know, it affects the entire Marvel Universe, what some of the uh, things that happen in these pages. So this is where I tell you to read before we get to an uh, all-new era of X-Men. All-new X-Men gets a new volume, and this time it is Dennis Hopeless with Mark Bagley. So Mark Bagley, who was at the time had left Marvel to go and work at DC, comes back uh, to help launch this title right here. And this features some of the characters of the original five, and it also has Laura during her time as All-New Wolverine, Kid Apocalypse, and a couple of other characters that appeared throughout the X-Men's lives. So this is what kicks off that series, and this is why I wanted to mention that uh, Angel got fire wings, so you're not shocked and surprised why he looks the way he does. So after the events of Secret Wars, we have this old guy that looks like Wolverine walking around, but hey, Wolverine is dead, what's happening? So now we have Old Man Logan here in the 616 universe. And he's joined the Extraordinary X-Men. All led by Storm, Magic has taken the X-Mansion to Limbo, and that's where they're staying to keep safe. We have Colossus join the team, and it's got artwork in here by Umberto Ramos. That's who ends up helping to kick off the team. However, in this team, Jean Grey, the 05 Jean Grey, the original Jean Grey from all new X-Men. No, it all gets so confusing. She decides to join uh, the team. And let's keep going. Now we have this series here by Cullen Bunn. In the series of Uncanny X-Men, so again, another relaunch of Uncanny X-Men with a brand new number one, this series felt like a continuation to his Magneto, which is freaking phenomenal if you've not read his Magneto series. And it feels like a continuation to that because it is like Magneto's X-Men. It's got Sabretooth, it's got Psylocke, it's got Archangel, and it's got M as the main characters. This is drawn by Greg Land, but his artwork kind of works. Uh, you've got some returning characters that we haven't seen in a while, such as the Dark Riders, but you can find out for yourself what how all these characters are back and who ends up staying and who ends up leaving. So next up is the Apocalypse Wars, and you'll notice that all these titles are going to be the Apocalypse Wars for all the volumes too. So here we have the original Cyclops, we have all the characters back, and one thing you may have noticed is, where the hell is Cyclops? Our Cyclops, our 616 Cyclops, not this kid Cyclops. Well, we don't know yet during this time, it's kind of a thing that he's gone. We don't know where he is, they kind of hint at it from time to time, but we're, we'll get there, we'll talk about how exactly and where he's been. But this all leads into the Apocalypse Wars. And here's Extraordinary X-Men Apocalypse Wars. Again, all these characters are about to fight Apocalypse on their own turf. They're about to deal with the character of Apocalypse. And Apocalypse is different in each series. You know, we have Kid Apocalypse. We have the Apocalypse from the Age of Apocalypse. And we have Apocalypse that's in the 616 universe. And they're all dealing with Apocalypse in their own way. So, honestly... Even though they're all labeled the Apocalypse Wars, they all can be read as standalone stories. There's really, it doesn't continue from all new X Men to Uncanny X Men and then lead back here to Extraordinary X Men. But again, it's got beautiful artwork by Umberto Ramos. And let's look at the next book The Uncanny X Men Apocalypse Wars. And now we have Ken Lashley supplying the artwork. And this is an artist that I loved over the years he's the first time i remember seeing his artwork was in the pages of the excalibur issues then he did the age of um age of apocalypse excalibur and from time to time he comes back to x-men because he did work on x-men gold for a while but now we have mystique showing up and again the x-men the uncanny x-men magneto's team dealing with their version of apocalypse and speaking of their version of Apocalypse, there is an oversized hardcover that collects just the Apocalypse Wars issues. So if you like 
oversized artwork, if you like events, and you just care about the events and not the ongoing series, this is the book for you. Because this just collects the Apocalypse Wars issues of Uncanny X-Men, All New X-Men, and Extraordinary X-Men. So... You can come and get this if you want to. But again, like I said, all three of the series didn't really connect with each other. They're all dealing with the Apocalypse event in their own way. Next up is Hell Hath So Much Fury. Dennis Hopeless and Mark Bagley with Volume 3. This is pretty interesting because we have the clone of Wolverine starting to dig on Angel, who's a time-displaced X-Men. Uh, whatever. And honestly, okay... We thought she was the clone, but if you've been if you read All New Wolverine, you find out there's more to it than that. But I I did find that interesting. I guess that it should have been Cyclops and Laura. I don't know. So you have Iceman going out on dates. This is the original Iceman. And kids just being kids. This was a fun series, honestly. Not to be taken too seriously. There is a fun story here that's a take on Rear Window, which is um one of my favorite Hitchcock movies, but it's it features Cyclops in a wheelchair as he's watching events play out. And yes, there are some returning characters from, well, some Inferno places. Back to Extraordinary X-Men, Kingdom's Fall. So in the aftermath of the Apocalypse Wars, this is Colossus dealing with the effects of being a horseman, one of the horsemen, and he's rampaging through all these uh, places, Meanwhile, his friends are trying to get him back, including his sister, Magic, Ileana. So, she's trying to uh, bring her brother back. And yes, during this time, Humberto Ramos had left the book uh, to go and work on... Ama I think he was working on Amazing Spider-Man. But this is Jeff Lemire's book again. And, you know, Lemire from time to time has talked about how he wasn't able to do what he wanted to do with the X-Men. Mainly because of editorial mandate. But... Take it as you will. And one of the things I forgot to mention is during volume threes of all of these is when we start hearing about the Terrigen Mist, the inhuman Terrigen Mist that's going around and how it's affecting humans and mutants. Next up is the Uncanny X-Men volume three, Waking from a Dream. So we have the introduction of an all new, all different Hellfire Club. Because what is an X-Men story without their richest nemesis? Even in the pages of Wolverine and the X-Men, there was a... I like that version of the Hellfire Club. Um, this one here is yeah, run-of-the-mill Hellfire Club, but whatever. I'll take it. Um, again, talks of the Tyrogen Mist, returning characters, Magneto being confronted by Psylocke as to what secrets he is hiding. And sadly, all, the, all this era is about to wrap up. And of course, again, where the hell is Cyclops? What's, what's going on? You know, he's been missing, and, and we haven't heard where he's been, and nobody really talks about it. Where's Emma? Well, let's talk about this event here, Death of X. And this is written by Jeff Lemire, Charles Soule, drawn by Aaron Cooter for the most part. But this is the big event before the IVX, which is the Inhumans versus X-Men. And this event shows exactly what happened before Uncanny X-Men, before All-New X-Men, and before Extraordinary X-Men. So, this event here shows what happened. So, it's the Terrigen Mist, it's the X-Men traveling to different locations to see what exactly is happening, and things will change, because they always do for the X-Men. So, you can find out exactly what the heck Death of X even means. Which it all leads to this, the Inhumans versus X-Men. I find that title very ironic because during this time, it was rumored that Marvel was trying to do away with X-Men because they didn't have the rights to the movie, so they were trying to make the Inhumans like X-Men. So the, the title really, <laughs> it's more to it than just the X-Men fighting the Inhumans. So this is, like I've been saying, they've been dealing with the Terrigen Mist. The Inhumans have released the Terrigen Mist on Earth in the hopes of creating more Inhumans. That's the thing that gives them their powers. However, it's having an effect on mutants. And it's revealed here that mutants are dying because of the Terrigen Mist. But, and they call it truce. But then there's, of course, some secrets. And Hank McCoy's trying to figure out exactly how these two races are going to live together. And meanwhile, what happens to the humans that are caught in the middle of all of this? So this kicks off this... It's really a seven-issue event because there's an issue zero in here. But this is what kicks off that event. And that is the Inhumans versus X-Men. It is collected in oversized hardcover. Um, it is also collected in trade paperback format. Every one of these books... 
um, Uncanny X-Men, Extraordinary X-Men, and All New X-Men is coming to an end. And the way these books end do have ties to IVX. And all four volumes deal with the ramifications or the big fights against the Inhumans, between X-Men and Inhumans. Now, I said to read Inhumans versus X-Men first because that's where Magneto makes a decision that isn't really sitting well with a lot of people, especially Psylocke. So she has to make decisions. Does she take him down? What exactly does she need to do in order to stop this? So there's some wonderful moments in here, I think, uh, during this series. And this does wrap up Colin Bunn's Uncanny X-Men. But don't worry, he will be back in part six of this reading order. And this also collects the annual. And this is the way the extraordinary X-Men deal with it. And this is all written by Jeff Lemire, wrapping up his run. And this really is about Storm coming to terms with what she has to do. Because does she lead her team of X-Men to fight against the Inhumans who are her allies or who are the X-Men allies because of the things that have been happening with the Terrigen Mist and what she is able to do to make sure that her people survive. So this does wrap up that run. This takes us all the way to issue number 20. And this ends up finishing out the series of Extraordinary X-Men. Uh, this does collect X-Men Prime in here, though, and we'll talk about that here in a second, because the last book I'm going to suggest reading for this reading order is the all-new X-Men Volume 4 IVX. So, yes, also uh, wrapping up all of Dennis Hopeless's uh, stories that he first started in issue one of his series, uh, wrapping up Loose Ends. However, by the end of this, the original five X-Men are still stranded on our timeline, but this deals mainly with the events of of IVX. Also contained in here is the annual and X-Men Prime number one, which sets up the next arc of X-Men. And that's it for this order though. We'll go back and read that in part six and talk about that. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. But that, as they say, is that. Now, some of these books are still available from our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to our patrons for voting for this. We have one more part left, so come back to the channel or subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to check that part out and check out all the other reading orders I have. I'll put out one every month. So, again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. More importantly, everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.